Hi, my name is Joshua Wells with Kids Ministry Tools, and in this video, we're going to talk about the three main causes that cause a child not to listen to their authorities. Let's get right into it. 33 times in the Bible, the word instruction is used. Majority of those times, 25 to be exact, is mentioned in Proverbs. Proverbs was compiled by the man Solomon, King Solomon. And King Solomon had a lot of wisdom. He was known as the wisest man to live. Now, that being said, he was trying to instruct his son, Rehoboam, in the way that he should go. And in so doing, he told his son, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. But yet Rehoboam did not turn out right. What were some of the things that may have caused Rehoboam to get to the point where he did not hear his father's instruction? What got Rehoboam to the point where he didn't want to listen to his dad anymore? Well, number one, I would simply say that it's also mentioned in Proverbs that pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. So that being said, I believe that Rehoboam had, number one, stopped listening to his parents because of pride. Pride. Pride can stop a child from listening to their parents. Well, they get to the point where, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know what I'm doing. I know how this works. I know this, I know that. And they get to the point where they think they know more than their, even their parents do. And pride can stop an individual from thinking that they can learn from somebody else, let alone hear the instruction of their father. And how sad it is that we would be prideful to the point of even ignoring the instruction of our father. Well, that's exactly what happened to Rehoboam. Rehoboam ignored his father's instruction and disobeyed. Well, what brought him to that point? Pride. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In Proverbs chapter number six, he says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. The first one he mentions is a proud look. God does not like pride. Pride despises the thought of authority. Every individual has to learn how to humble themselves. Because if we don't learn to humble ourselves, then we get humbled by the great one, God himself. So therefore, <laughs> he humbles us a lot harder than, we, we, than it would be on us if we hum humbled ourselves or learned to humble ourselves. If we humble ourselves, it's learning to think of others before ourselves. And how much more so than to think of our parents before we think of ourselves. So that being said, number one, what stops a child from hearing their instruction, the instruction of their father? Pride. Number two, Solomon is trying to instruct his son Rehoboam to be careful of who he hangs around. Therefore, number two is others. What would stop somebody from listening to their authority? The wrong people in their life. You know, people do influence us. They really do. And the people that we hang around can influence us for right or for wrong. Therefore, if the child that you have is hanging around somebody that is in a different understanding of the Word of God than you, then they may persuade your child to go against you in that area. But not just in the area of the Bible, but in the ways of life. Even the things of your desires of your heart for your child. If they hang around a friend that totally goes against what their parents even say, well, then that friend's going to influence them to go against what you say. And even so, more to the so, if their parents don't care what happens to their child. And I've seen this over and over again in over 20 years of ministry with the children, and that is this. Some kids like spending time with families that are less strict. What do you mean? Well, they like going to the friend's house that they play the video game that their parents don't allow them to, that their own parents don't allow them to. You see, there's a lot of parents that don't want their children playing games where you murder and kill and steal and things like that. Well, some of those things, uh, sin is fun. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not putting a stamp of approval on it, but the Bible even says there's pleasure in sin for a season. And uh, I know I'll get a lot of flack on this, but thou shalt not kill is not just related to reality because Jesus even said if you hate your brother without a cause, you're in danger of the same judgment as of a murderer. So that being said, uh, you shouldn't be hating people even in your mind, whether it's a video game or whatever the case may be. We shouldn't go around trying to shoot people. Uh, believe it or not, if, you, if a kid never hears a curse word, he won't use it. If a kid never sees what a gun is used for in the wrong way, then he won't use a gun for the wrong reason. But a lot of that has to go back to training. And how can we train our children if they're not hearing the instruction of their father? So that being said, how can I get our children 
to hear us? Well, first, we've got to get rid of the pride issue. Once we get rid of the pride issue, we've got to get rid of the bad influences in their life. Sometimes that's TV. Sometimes it's the radio. Sometimes it's uh, what they're listening to. Sometimes it's who they're listening to. I mean, for crying out loud, there's a lot of sin out there. And if we're not careful, that sin will corrupt our children. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, the newest Disney stuff that's coming out, the newest Netflix that's coming out, our, our children, we have no business watching. By the way, God is not the one that's putting the ratings on these videos. Uh, no, God's not the one that says this is PG. So as long as your parents are here, or as long as you know their parents say that it's okay to watch, then that's okay. PG-13. As long as you're 13 and your parents are okay with it, you can watch. As long as your parents are okay with it and it's PG-14, then that's fine. Or TV-14. Uh, no, 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 no. That's man's standard. God's standard is sin is sin. If it's lying, if it's cheating, if it's stealing, if it's cursing, if it's swearing, uh, if it's nudity, those kind of things God doesn't like. Those things are called sin. And so those things will influence our children for wrong. By the way, if the, our children see a double standard in us, then sadly they're going to not want to listen to us. When they see that double standard, they think, well, you know, dad's okay with this, but he's not okay with this. Or dad's not okay with this, but he does it himself. Uh, that's a double standard. So that being said, let's do the best we can to get rid of this bad influence of our life, of others. So first we said, what stops a child from listening to his authority? Pride. What's the second one? Others. And Rehoboam had that problem. You remember in Proverbs chapter 1, he said, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Then he says later, he says, hey, they say, hey, let's have one purse. Uh, let's put our monies together. Let's have one purse. And he says, look, refrain from them. Stay away from them. Don't even go near them. And that's the influence. And you know, remember, he warned, her about, warned him about a strange woman. He warned him about uh, ungodly people, of the fool and all that kind of thing. Well, he was trying to warn his son about bad influences in his life. And that leads us to number three. Number three is sadly a point that I see that a lot of people don't return from. And that is they get to the point of, I don't care. I don't care what mom says. I don't care what dad says. I don't even care what my friends say. I, I don't even care what any authority says. This is past the pride point. This is past the wrong friends point. This is the point where people get to where it's the breaking point. They just don't care anymore. There's nothing in them that really cares anymore. And sadly, this is where suicide comes from. This is where um, depression comes from. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a sad state to be in. I, f I don't care. I just don't care anymore. Why, why should I care anymore? Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. Well, that's where they're wrong. You see, Jesus loves everyone, and he loves you right where you're at. Uh, even if the, even though you're a sinner, Jesus loves you and wants to forgive you, wants you to have a home in heaven with him. But how sad it is when we get to the point of the, I don't care. Because if a child gets to that point of I don't care, then they are in a deep, deep spot in life. And it's going to take a work of God to get them back. So that being said, pray for your children. Pray for our children. Pray that God would use them greatly and, and keep them in a tender heart state because it's very important for our children to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So that being said, what are some things that we can do to prevent these things from happening? Well, what's the opposite of pride? Humility. What's the opposite of pride? Being humble. Uh, not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. So therefore, going around and helping others as much as possible. But also, I, I think a good definition of humble is being able to be happy for those around you that are blessed. You know what I mean? Uh, and if your children can get to that point where, you know, hey, so-and-so got that. Yay! I'm proud of you. That's wonderful. That's great. Instead of, I want one too. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, if we can get our ch children to that point, what, what a great accomplishment. How do we get them to that point? Well, we've got to get them in God's Word. In so doing, we can get them in a Sunday school, get them into church. They don't need less of church. They need more of church. How sad it is that parents discipline their kids by saying, look, you did wrong. You can't go to church this week. I've heard it. And how sad it is. They need more church, not less church. So what's one of the ways that we can help our children learn to hear the instruction of their father? Get them in church, get them in God's word, and get them around godly examples. 
around people that love the Lord, around people that want to want to serve God more than anything. And they get to see real people. Look, we're all human, right? But if you can get your child around people, humans, okay, that love the Lord with all their heart, their soul, their mind, their strength, and they can see that there's a genuine about that person, that they really do love the Lord. They're not just going through the motions. They're not just packing their Bible and bringing it to church and putting it in the back of the trunk again. No, no, no. They, they love the Lord. Hey, I hope this video is a help to you, and I hope and pray that your children grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So what are some things to help? Obviously, get more of God in them. Get the godly kind of influence in them. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.